One of the uh, concepts through which we got to know, to know you was your writings on uh, petty commodity production. Uh, can you situate that in the moment in which you've just described that it came out? And I want to ask a follow-up question on that. Perhaps you might want to think of that while answering the first part, which is how do you sort of connect your early work on uh, petty commodity production with your much more recent work on classes of labor, if you do at all? I was working in Tanzania for four years, and that's where I became interested in agrarian political economy. As I explained in a, an interview I did um, a couple of years ago, a print interview with uh, Liam Campling and Gavin Capps that was in the Journal of Agrarian Change. 90% uh, or well, more, 98% of my students in Tanzania were from rural backgrounds. Um, they were interested to learn about Marxist capital and Marxist theories of capitalism and imperialism but they had very little direct experience of the sort of forms of production and their social relations that are so central to Marxist capital. They, they came mostly from rural peasant backgrounds, in fact. So, and they knew a great deal, evidently. But I initially wanted to give them a sort of analytical framework to think about um, the material and social contours of, of the lives of their families in, in Tanzanian villages and so on. Um, and initially I was very, very influenced by Jairus Banerjee, uh, modes of production in the materialist conception of history, which I read and reread and struggled with for at least two years, I think. And I was very taken with Jairus's formulation of peasants as in, in modern capitalism as in effect wage labor equivalents and um, that seemed to me very interesting and I realized retrospectively which is when one often does realize these things that I was looking for a way of conceptualizing theorizing peasants within modern capitalism rather than historically in some of the famous debates like the transition debates and so on then there was a critique of my work, uh, which uh, probably marked everything I did subsequently by um, Peter Gibbon and Michael Neocosmos. And it was from them that I took up and tried to develop in my own way the notion of peasants in contemporary capitalism as uh, petty commodity producers. Um, so that's where that came from, and then I tried to develop that and apply it uh, in various uh, contexts and, and in, in the framework of, of uh, various debates. I again realized retrospectively somewhat later, and this connects with your question about classes of labor, that what I was trying to do, even if I wasn't fully aware of it at the time, was get away from essentialist or purist notions of both the peasantry on one hand and the working class or proletariat on the other. And I did come to a realization, perhaps relatively early, though I wasn't the only one, that so many um, farmers in the contemporary world, especially in the South, but not only there, were also very connected with urban and industrial economies in different ways and that their conditions of existence were difficult to explain mm. without thinking about those connections. So this led to my conception of classes of labor. Now it is not a theorized concept. Mm. It, it, it's a kind of a um, it's a bit more than a descriptive concept mm. but it struck me that if so many especially poorer farmers in the countryside were engaged in labor migration, that they represented a great pool of foot la footloose labor, in Jan Bremen's great phrase, um, that, and, and if they were unable to reproduce themselves through their own household farming, which of course is the great ideal of Chayanov and of yes. most positive conceptions of peasantry, uh, then they were at least close cousins of many of those who could be called perhaps more straightforwardly w 
working classes, uh, again, especially in the South. So I arrived at that notion of classes of labour. Now, it didn't involve um, throwing away the concept of petty commodity production. Mm -hmm. it, it was a way of trying to distinguish conceptually between those who could reproduce themselves through, broadly speaking, family labour on family land, um, which approximates the classic definition of peasants, mm. um, and those many rural people, households, which are unable to do so and therefore um, need to reproduce themselves through la wage labour as well, which, which are very, very large in number, mm. not least in India, as, as, as you well know. So that, that was the purpose. Now, I do think that the notion of classes of labour does require further interrogation, investigation, testing through application, and a few people have taken it up um, and I think have, have advanced uh, the sense of the, of the term, um, and not least here at SOAS. I mean, one is Jens Lerke, with whom I have a continuous ongoing conversation, and another one was Jonathan Pattenden, who I think took the notion of um, classes of labour further in his PhD and then subsequent book on uh, Karnataka uh, and, and explored some of the intricate um, connections between large sections of rural population and migrant labour, wage labour and so on. The while there's a need, this is my last comment here, uh, while, while there's a need for further theoretical interrogation and development of the notion of classes of labour, I recognise that it's uh, extremely challenging empirically. Mm. And that is because, as we well know, uh, the boundaries between peasants or you know, self-reproducing family farmers, um, the rural landless, and especially those who do some farming but depend very heavily on wage income for their reproduction. Mm. These boundaries are very fluid. Mm. And because the conditions of existence of both much petty commodity production and of um, classes of labour, rural classes of labour in the South, are, are very unstable, mm. then one cannot be and should not be at all dogmatic and try to resolve some of these issues um, uh, deductively by, by further theoretical specification. And that's why, for me, the most interesting theoretical developments do come from testing theoretical ideas, theoretical models against really good empirical mm. fieldwork.